Pels back on the floor tonight, fresh off the all-star break. They welcome in to the blender, uh, the Houston Rockets. Everybody, Scott Kushner, the uh, Polk and Kush podcast. Good enough to hang out with us for a couple minutes here, talk some Pels. How are you, dude? I'm doing all right, trying to avoid uh, traffic in New Orleans as I head toward the arena. Um, what do you? What kind of crowd do you expect tonight? Uh, I don't. The tickets. I looked at the. I, you know, kind of like a, one of those things you just have an interest in for no reason. I'll always look at the tickets like a couple hours for the game. They're they're pretty uh, cheap tonight, so I think it's going to be pretty weak. To be quite honest, a lot tomorrow t- looks pretty good, but uh, tonight looks very weak. It is a back to back. A Rockets night heat tomorrow. Um, the a lot of times, obviously, the opponent in the NBA dictates fan interest like it like no other sport people will go to watch the opponent star power when they come in and obviously Houston not not super great but this is a team Scott that won seven of eight going into the all-star break and I don't know man they're they're leading the division at 33 and 22 Uh, should I feel as optimistic as I do about this team in the quote-unquote second half it's such a weird spot for this team to be in right now because they're uh, on every like surface metric, right? Which includes record, which is far and away the most important thing. Everything looks great, but yet they've really failed to kind of capture the imagination of their fans, of the region, of whatever, because every really big game they've had, particularly, you know, uh, big crowds at home, those sorts of things, they've fallen on their face. They've lost so many uh, games to really good opponents. They've had a couple really you know, important wins as well. And they've taken care of business as well as anybody in the NBA. Uh, but they just have not had those statement wins that would allow you to think, okay, they can really, you know, do something in the playoffs that they're kind of poised to, to make a big run or anything of that nature. So they're in this weird spot where they're performing probably as well as they can. Uh, but at the same time, that doesn't seem to really be getting anybody excited at the moment. Maybe the all-star break is what they needed for football to officially end, all those sorts of things, but it is kind of a, a, a bizarre spot. Normally, if they were be this good this late in the season, this is really when the casual people start jumping in. I have not seen that yet. Is it, I want to ask you why, but is it, is it a fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Gotta be. It's gotta be part of that, right? That there's just no belief uh, that they're going to be able to get out of the first round. And I think there's that is, is such a weird thing because the NBA, it's really hard to get out of the first round, especially yeah. in the West. Uh, but at the same time, like if you get in the playoffs, like that is a significant accomplishment for this team. I just think nobody kind of has a, 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 their arms wrapped around this group yet. There's something about Zion that people can't totally figure out. There's just a lot of... Uh, awkwardness when it comes to this city and this team and it's not to say they hate them i don't think there's any animosity there's just been a lot of like people are still definitely in wait and see mode it feels like compared to most of the time when they're playing well everybody starts to sort of jump on board this time of year last year was deflating scott i mean to to go into the play in two seasons ago and to have the success they did really captured a lot of people and they went Mm -hmm. into last season with expectation and the air got let out of the balloon. And I think it's just hard to ride that roller coaster for fans. So, it, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I think you're right. I, I think there's definitely part of that lingers. I also think there's just some, some weird waiting for the other shoe to drop when it comes to health, right? Like everyone's sort of expecting Zion to still get hurt. Everyone's sort of expecting Brandon Ingram to not be playing all these games. Like there is just this lingering you know, pain that's out there that nobody knows what yeah. is going to come, but it's sitting there. And I, and, and that definitely feels like it plays a role in all of this too. Uh, but I do think if they are, you know, getting to the playoffs and they're winning 60% of their games, people will eventually jump on board and you will see a big deal. But yeah, as of right now, like tonight, it does not feel that way. He's on Twitter at Scott D Kushner. Give him a follow. Uh, let's talk about tonight. Um, match up against a, a, a a bad Houston team. What are we keeping an eye on? I mean, Shingun, who's their big guy, Alpern Shingun, is a uh, he's a great player, really good playmaker, big guy. Uh, that's going to be kind of the the number one guy for them to stop. Uh, a lot of what Houston does runs through him, but really, it's going to be what the Pelicans do or don't do. I'm very curious to see how much they go back to Point Zion. I think that's 
when this team is at its most interesting and really at its most fun is when Zion has the ball in his hands and he's creating. He seems to really relish that. It does feel like he plays, and you know, you, you've watched this too. Does it feel he plays with more energy? And maybe that's just surface level when he has the ball in his hands. Yes. You know, it, it seems as if he defends better. It seems as if he's running the floor better. It just seems like it engages him more, which probably isn't a great trait, but is a thing that you see that when he's got the ball in his hands for the majority of the time he's on the floor, he does seem to be more locked in and you're getting a better version of Zion. And I think they're they're just a more fun team when that's happening. So hopefully for our entertainment purposes, uh, you're going to see more of that tonight. Um, we did see one transaction. Uh, they signed Malcolm Hill to a two-way contract. Um He's been really good in the G League, really good scorer of the G League. Any anything of note here with this signing? No, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. fair, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Look ahead. No, Matt. I mean, this is this is the deepest team. If it's not in the NBA, then you know one one of them for sure. They've got so many guys. I mean, Jordan Hawkins has been a fantastic rookie by all accounts. He cannot get on the court like this guy. He's not going to play at all unless you know there's like a bus accident on the way to the game. Like six guys break their leg. Like there's, there's just there's really Why? it feels very unlikely that anybody else is going to make much of a difference. On this. By the way, that reminds me though, Muse. I wanted to tell you this. I'm sorry. This is very random and not good for live radio. So I was last Friday for the Rising Stars game. I'm driving home and and I'm listening to our station on ESPN Radio and ESPN National before the Rising Stars game ran a montage of great plays from the the from the players in the Rising Stars and they had a graph call in the Rising. Love Star. it. So go to, so if you so Muse, this is inside baseball. I apologize, Muse. Go into Sterlitz. It was last Friday. I want to say around eight o'clock. You like the top of the hour. You'll you'll be able to find it. But there was a graph call in. And I want to pull it. So anyway, sorry. He's yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's so good. He dude. did he did baseball for Tulane on Sunday. He came back and did like one game of baseball. Nice. It was the most fun I've had in months <laughs> listening to it. I mean, yeah, he's right. pounding the desk. He's yelling about oh. reviews. I was like, oh, I miss this guy so much. <laughs> it's on the corner. Give me the call, <laughs> Rav. So good. I love him. Um, all right, hey, really quick. Uh, well, I got I got maybe a minute or two left. Let's. Uh, they got Houston tonight. Uh, Pell's our favorite. I think the line. Let me look real quick. I think the line's six. I saw it. Um, uh, yeah, I I'm sorry. Pell, Pell's seven and a half. Pell's seven and a half tonight uh, is the consensus spread. There there are some six and a halfs out there, but uh, consensus spread is seven and a half. Pell's look ahead uh, here when you look uh, tonight. Miami, this uh, you know these next handful of games. What what's realistic for this team as we look as they start the you know the I, I, we say the second half, but you understand it's they're well beyond the, the halfway part of the season, just after the All Star break uh, for for this team with what remains. Yeah, they got a ton of home games. They were hardly home, uh, you know, the last month, and that's usually with Mardi Gras and all that other stuff. You, you end up on the road a lot. Uh, and so now they've got a ton of home games coming up, and they've been pretty good at home, uh, especially against teams that aren't elite. And so they're, they're going to play three home games in four nights, Houston, Miami, Chicago. Those are all three super winnable games, and then you're in a really good position to go New York, Indiana. I mean, you've got a very winnable slate in front of you with a handful of exceptions. I think they play the Clippers once in the next three, four weeks. Other than that, in the Knicks, I don't think they play another team that we considered like a definite favorite over them. So that's going to be a, a, this is a, an important stretch for a team that has done so well of taking care of business all season. If they can just keep doing that, they're going to solidify that place in the top six, which I think is very important emotionally for this team to not be back in the playoff, the play in. They need to get themselves into the actual playoffs and go from there. 16 and 10 at home on the season for New Orleans. Back home tonight uh, against the Rockets, as Scott mentioned, back to back. Rockets tonight, uh, Bulls tomorrow there at the Blenders. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below. Oh, 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 oh.